So in our previous discussion, we have discussed about uh, conductometric estimation and uh, we have seen calorimetric estimation too. So we have a different, uh, today we are going to discuss flame photometry. So what is flame photometry? So it is similar to calorimetric estimation, right? So in calorimetry, you know, in flame photometry, we are sprinkling the solution of the particular salt. So what forms here, the basis here is, so you know that all of you have done the experiment in your plus 2. The confirmation test for potassium is, you are going, going to do flame test. Confirmation test for calcium is flame test. Confirmation test for barium is flame test. What is flame test? Going to take a salt, going to make paste in the acid and expose it to the flame using the glass rod. When exposed to the flame in the flame using the glass rod, the calcium gives brick red color, your barium gives apple green color, your uh, potassium gives uh, uh, lilac color, right? Why is this? Because the metal present here absorbs energy, gets excited to the, from ground level to it gets excited to higher energy level. So while coming back to the ground states, it liberates some energy. That energy falls in the, that energy falls in what? The visible region. If energy falls in the visible region and uh, 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 that uh, depending upon the wavelength, you get the color. So what is flame photometry and that, that is the basic principle of this. Okay. So in flame photometry, you can estimate sodium, you can estimate potassium, you can estimate lithium, you can estimate calcium. So how is this carried out? We will see today. Okay. So what is the major principle in this? The basic principle of this flame photometry is that, is that when a solution containing metallic compound is exposed into flame, the vapor containing metal atoms will be formed. Okay. So some of these metal atoms which are in the gaseous state may be raised to high energy level which is sufficiently high to permit the emission of radiation. So because of, I mean, it will emit the radiation. So that radiation is sufficient for our investigation. So this method is generally used uh, for analysis of sodium, potassium, calcium, lithium, etc. So how is this flame photometer uh, works? We will see later. So any metal which gives color, any metal when excited to high energy level, when it comes back to ground state, if it gives color and if that color comes in the UV, I mean comes in the visible region, only that type of thing can be uh, estimated using flame photometer. So let us see how is that done. So, uh, so whatever I have told is uh, mentioned over here. So a flame photometer contains a, a flame photometer contains the compressed air supply. It contains the compressed fuel supply. So we're going to, if you want to estimate sodium chloride, we're going to take sodium chloride solution of known concentration in a solution form and dip a Kepler in this. So it will be connected to a suction. So for a flame, what you're going to do, you need a air, right? So the compressed will be supplied here. So the sample will be sucked in, air will be mixed with the sample and it will be exposed to the Bunsen flame. Okay. So here compressed fuel, the fuel will be supplied over here. So here the sample will be supplied, the sample will be sucked in, mixed with the air and it will be exposed to the flame. So let us consider we are taking sodium chloride solution. So when it exposed to the flame, what happens? Sodium will get excited to the higher energy level and it liberates energy. When it's coming back to lower energy level, it gives you golden yellow color. So that golden yellow color, it comes and falls in the slit and it will get filtered over here. It will get filtered over here. Okay, and it get amplifies here and the reading, the light will be displayed over here. So for 0.1 you get some color, for 0.2 ppm concentration you get color, for 0.3 you get some color. Everything will be noted down. So that is how your uh, flame photometer will work. Okay. So let us see how to prepare the standard solutions. Okay. So prepare, we are going to prepare, let us see for sodium and potassium. We are going to prepare standard solutions of sodium and uh, potassium of 2, 4, 6 and 8 ppm by transferring uh, 2, 4, 6 and 10 ml stock solution of 50 ppm into different uh, 50 ml volumetric flask using the burette. So we are going to dilute these solutions up to the mark using distilled water 
and we are going to dilute even the test solution. So you know in a two, I am going to label it two, four, six, eight. So in two class label two, you will have two ppm. Label four will have four ppm. You will have some unknown solution whose ppm you are supposed to, whose concentration you are supposed to find out. So we are going to note down the readings from the uh, uh, all the solutions from flame photometer. So we are going to plot a graph from flame photometer against the volume of sodium or potassium. Okay. So then we are going to plot a graph of concentration of sodium and we will determine the unknown solution. So this is the optical readings whatever you get from the flame photometer and this is the concentration of sodium or potassium. So for 2 ppm you have one reading, for 4 ppm you have one reading, for 5 ppm you have one reading, for 6 you have one reading, for 8 you have one reading. For unknown solution you have the optical reading but you don't know the concentration. So once you plot a graph like this over here, so then you are going to point out the reading over on, on the intensity here. From there we are going to draw, draw a dotted line until it touches the curve. Once it touches the curve we are going to draw a perpendicular line over here. Once it, uh, whatever solution concentration gets here, that is the concentration of sodium or potassium in the unknown solution. So this is how we are going to determine the concentration of sodium or potassium or lithium or calcium in the given unknown solution. Thank you.